First Lady Jill Biden has now tested positive for COVID-19. So here right now to answer your questions about that and all is Dr. Todd Ellerin, Chief of Infectious Diseases and Social Health. Health. Dr. T, it's great to see you as always. So Me let's too. begin with the First Lady. She is double vaccinated. Yep. She is boosted. She's taking Paxlovid. What are doctors watching for at this point? Well, Ed, as you just said, she's doing all the things that she needs to do in order to reduce the likelihood of severe infection. That's the key. But of course, her providers are still going to look at her closely, making sure she doesn't develop COVID pneumonia, making sure she's her breathing is okay, that her oxygen saturations are okay. And, you know, she is the first lady, so they're obviously going to look at her closely. But her prognosis is very good, given the fact that she's vaccinated, boosted, and on Paxlovid. Let's talk more about Paxlovid. The president had that rebound infection after taking the drug. We do know it's been proven that that's an issue. So how concerning is that? Is this antiviral pill still the best option? I mean, you want to get better. You don't want to take a step back and, and only to get better again. Nobody wants that. You want to just get better, doctor. Mm -hmm. That's right. So Maria, the first thing to remember is that the president may not have given the first lady COVID. If you look at the timeline, it's really been a while since he's tested negative. So it's possible with BA5 circulating, we know how contagious it is. She may have gotten it from somewhere, uh, you know, from somewhere else, although we don't know. So as far as the Paxlovid rebound is concerned, it's real, but it's not that common. Most of us think that it's less than 10% of patients who are developing it. Remember, the key to Paxlovid is if you are high risk, you have those conditions, obesity, diabetes, immunocompromised, bad lungs or heart, kidney. You want to get on the medication. It reduces your likelihood of being hospitalized. Now, remember, if you're standard risk, otherwise healthy, young, then you don't want to take Paxlovid. Okay. There is a risk of Paxlovid rebound. It's real. Believe it or not, it can also even happen in patients that don't take the Paxlovid. Mm -hmm. You can still have a COVID rebound. It's been studied. So it, we're still recommending it strongly in high-risk patients. You know, Dr. T, let, let's talk about reality. We are, we're, we're heading to Labor Day. We're three years into this thing. We're still talking about COVID. We head into another fall. Back to school is, is not on the horizon. It's like right here. It's at the front right. door. So what are you most concerned about? Okay, first of all, let's not end summer too quickly. Okay? Yeah, amen. I, 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 we vote for that too. Here's the good news. I'm feeling very optimistic. Why? Because we know our kids will thrive even during COVID. We've already had that treadmill test and we've passed. Schools have stayed open. There are some guidance from the CDC that is changing. They are recommending now that you no longer have to do a test to stay in school. If you're a close contact, you don't have to test every day. They are still recommending that you test on day five. If you have COVID, you can come back to school after five days of isolation, um, as long as you're feeling better, okay? You still have to wear a mask for 10 days. Remember, if you're a close contact of someone, you still have to wear a mask in school for at least 10 days. But the key here is we wanna keep our kids in schools, and I think that's where we're headed, and I'm feeling very optimistic about it. Dr. T, great to see you. Thanks for your insight. Be well, doctor.